Hi guys, Trevor Olson here. Um, one thing that I really got into the last couple of years, thanks to a friend of mine, um, Thrash Miller, you know who you are, um, is musky fishing. And one thing that I've really figured out is there is a cult behind this. So the last year, couple of years, um, I haven't been able to go to a musky show because of working weekends. And this year, um, we had the ability to go to the Chicago Musky Expo. So I just got back and I wanted to touch on a couple baits that I picked up last year, um, either online or, or just uh, at a, a local bait shop. And as I'm learning, um, I kind of know what I want to use a little more often. And I also want to throw something different since I fish a lot of pressured waters like the Hayward area or Southwest Wisconsin, the few lakes we do have around here that have muskies. Um, so I guess starting off uh, from Team Rhino Outdoors, I picked up these last year. These are very different. Um, it's the TNA Angry Dragon. You got two different sizes here and two different colors. Um, they have a lead head. They have basically a split body as you can see, so they make a lot of motion. Plastic tail and chatterbait style front lip. And this thing creates a lot of shake and vibration in the water. You can use it jigging, straight retrieving. It's a great overall bait. I'm looking forward to using this at different times of the year this year. TNA Angry Dragon. Too many baits up here. Another one that I picked up last year from a local bait shop is the Phantom. Now, this is the Phantom soft tail. As you can see, it's got the soft tail on the end, and the hook placements are right directly underneath the body. It's a great twitch bait. Use a solid strand leader or a steel leader. Um, I use uh, basically a copper style straight leader, and it's a twitch bait. So it's a surface bait. You twitch it with a, a rod you know just barely touching down reel as you go and this really kicks some cool side to side action you can retrieve it in many different ways different speeds but that's a bait that I really enjoy using after I got a hang of it and then what I picked up this year at the Chicago Muskie Expo is another version of that it's the standard without the tail um, a little different color pattern as you can see in a lot of my choices, I like dark patterns and I do like orange a little bit as well. So that is the Phantom Standard and that's the Phantom Soft Tail. So the next that I have is from Musky Frenzy. So I noticed a lot of people, there's a few companies out there that are, are doing what they call is a, a, they're changing the different size of blades or different colors of blades and the one thing I like that Musky Frenzy was doing is what they call the Apache Stagger so this is a very similar blade size but they are slightly different as you can see this one is a little bit bigger a little longer and this one is just a little fatter and a little shorter so the clevis is also locked. They are locked together the way that clevis is designed. So they are always going to spin together, making it easier to start up, as well as a different thump action of the vibration that the fish will feel is a little different. And I got a couple different models of this. Um, I do like the orange and black, as you're going to see. And I also got a black and nickel blade one here and this is also from Musky Frenzy. So you can see they're slightly different but the clevis is all one piece clevis and I have a feeling this is going to work out really well. It's a little slightly bigger bait, a little longer with one style hook. I can also add more hooks if I wanted to but that is from Musky Frenzy. Uh, Suic Thriller. So working weeds or being very erratic. Uh, the Musky Thriller, this is I believe the 10 inch model and it's weighted. I have a lot of unweighted ones. So that's the weighted version. And another thing that I've found that 
um, a lot of companies are putting out right now is the ability to put weights in them. This is a wood one, so it's a little easier. They tell me with wood, you can drill a hole. And you can see that this kit has an insert in it that you would basically press in and drill a hole just slightly smaller than your insert. And then you press it in or glue it in, or epoxy it in, whatever, keeping the threads bare so you can still put weights. Um, they tell me you can put them up here. You can, they tell me you can put them right here between these two hooks. Um, but I have a lot of unweighted versions and I wanted to start getting my bait down a little deeper. So I bought a weighted version and I also bought the weight kit for a couple of them that I have already. And that's from Suic. Esox Assault. All right. So I have a specific lake in the Hayward area that I've been told purple is the ticket. Uh, a lot of those lakes are clear, some are very stained, and some have just a tint of red or orange. And I don't know what it is, but they tell me purple is something to try. So I got this Esox Assault. Um, it's the single eight. And then I also, from Esox Assault, I picked up the Killer Tails. So I can put these on the back of a treble hook um, just to give my bucktails a little more action. Kramer Brothers. Now these guys are putting some baits out and turning some heads because they are very different too. So this is the Revolution 9. As you can see here, it looks like a double blade, but it's all one solid piece. It turns really easy, and another thing that they're doing is placing these uh, pieces of wire down so when it spins it makes a lot of noise the clicking and clacking noise I have a smaller version of this because I couldn't find any last year and the 7 inch version works well but I have a feeling that this 9 is really going to work um, one thing that they are telling me you can do is if you have a model that doesn't have these you can use a cotter pin and a couple uh, split rings and hook it up to the front and you can still get one to make that clacking noise. Some people don't like them and they'll take them off. That's your option. But you can also put them on. So that is the Kramer Brothers Revolution. And as you can see, I like dark. Um, I don't know why. It's just something and a lot of people tell me color doesn't matter. Um, in a way, I believe them, but in a way, they're selling me and baits just as much as me throwing them because you're not going to catch them if you don't throw them. So, the Revolution. That's the 9-inch. Lee Lures. Lee has got a reputation for making lures that hold up to many fish and changing things up that may have just been sparked interest years ago and he has changed the way the bait can run well he came up with the boiler maker last year um, and Lee fishes uh, the Madison chain of lakes a lot and I'm not that far away from Madison but the one thing I like is with the boiler maker you could fish really close to the surface to get over weeds but at the same time, run a single bladed bucktail really slow or change it up because of the flow. Well, this year they came out with the mini Boilermaker. I picked this up at the show as well as this one. Um, I bought two of them because I have a feeling I'm going to like them. I like the slight change of color. Um, this one might work really well at night. Um, but I do like to be able to see the bait, so I know when to do a figure eight, so the brighter color in the front is going to make things a little easier with that. But there's two mini boiler makers, and if I had a boiler maker, I could compare the sizes, but I did see them at the show, and they are considerably smaller. Um, and you can see the float in the back. The float is probably half the size, so mini boiler maker. He had about 200, I heard before the Chicago show, so I'm assuming by 
the Milwaukee show, he'll have a bunch left over too, and maybe some more made. So, Lee Lures Custom Baits Boiler Maker, but those are the mini. Um, so, from Pendemonium Tackle, I'm told this is a Wisconsin company. I have not heard of them until I just came across this bait walking around the Team Outdoors, Team Rhino Outdoors booth. Uh, one of the muskies I caught last year came on a, a like a, a blade similar to this, and I do like the way these pull. They don't pull very hard. They start up pretty easy, and I can run them pretty fast as a single, I suppose it would be a single eight, but it's a, more of a style willow blade. Um, but what I really liked about this bait from Pandemonium is probably going to be very durable because of the titanium body. And I'm thinking this is going to be a killer bait. And it really sets off with these little tails in the end too. Something for that fish to follow and fixate on and hopefully, you know, hopefully trigger some some big fish to bite. That is from Pandemonium Tackle. I'm told it's a Wisconsin company and you can buy it at Team Rhino Outdoors. I didn't see it on the website right now, but I'm assuming they will be soon. This was a Muskie Expo pickup. Oh, Beaver Baits. So, tell me, have you seen this style bait before? Uh, this would be considered the mini believe or mini beaver bait. Um, it's got a cool plastic tail, and it basically has three sections of bodies. And one thing I also liked about it is our, the head is already pre-drilled and ready to go for weights. So you can run this bait several different ways. And I pretty much bought every way that you can buy it or use it at the show. So I have an extra tail. So if orange is a little too much, maybe, I have a brown tail. Um, I can put the screw in weights. I have a weight kit. So I have a screw in weights that I can put into the head to run deeper. So I can run it slower, faster, or whatever. Um, it has two treble hooks. And they also have a blade kit. So I can hook that up in the front and I can run it as a bucktail. So I can jag this, I can straight retrieve it. Um, I can do a lot of things. And last year I found myself using rubber quite a bit in the season. And I was targeting bait fish. So this is something that I can either target bait fish, I can fish around rocks. I'm sure I can fish this pretty much anywhere because of the ability to change how this bait can be fished. So. <clears throat> that is beaver baits. Um, one thing I didn't touch on is chaos tackle. As you can see here, I have a mini Medusa, and I, like I said, I threw a lot of rubber last year. And this mini Medusa is a show color from chaos tackle uh, that is based off of the today's angler group of guys that really wanted their own color the colors that they like and that is walleye and white and I will say the walleye color works really well um, that's one of the fish that I caught last year was on a walleye color um, we do throw a lot of mini medusas because we target a lot of fish and, and numbers lakes so the mini seems to be something I like to throw a little more and I can work it a little faster because it's not heavy but that is one option Another thing I was doing last year is trying to target muskies in slightly deeper water chasing bait fish. So what I was doing was throwing a lot of these style rubber baits into bait pods. Well, Chaos came out with what they call the deep threat. And it is basically weight pieces that have got the notch already knocked out of them. So I can take this bait off, uh, that they could take this hook off, place it up there, and then put the hook back on and it'll stay put, or I'm sure I could even hook it up here, <clears throat> put it right directly on the head, and then I can hook up my line accordingly. Um, so they have many different weight options. I got the lightest one right now, and that's a half ounce, 
options. They have a couple different weight options you can use, but that is uh, today's angler color. And I'm telling you, this is going to be killer. And I like the change of color slightly because it helps me when I'm reeling in to be able to see it. I wouldn't mind also having maybe a different colored front head. That way when I am bringing it in, I can know when to get into my figure eight. And that's the reason why a lot of guys use a bright color is so they can see, so they know when it's coming in and you can run in your figure eight. Okay, so that does it for baits. Um, one thing that I had last year was a floating stick that I would stick in the net and measure my fish that way. I'm telling you, it works. It's an inexpensive way, but it's not ideal for really telling exactly how long it is because the ruler, if you spin it, they have different increments. So I caught a fish up in Hayward and I was fishing alone. I I thought it was 34, but it sure looks bigger than 34. And my buddy caught a 36 and a half inch this year and we had more time because we had two people. Um, my fish looked bigger than his 36 or as big. So it's really, it was really deceiving and it kind of stinks not knowing exactly how big that fish is. It doesn't matter to a lot of people. But for me, it was a, the first one in a long time, so I wanted to know. This year, I bought a musky bumper. This is just a standard size mus musky bumper, not the fat boy. But it has the ability to push the top of the fish up here and the front of the fish here. You can get this wet in the water quick. It floats, and then bring it back up on the deck. Put your fish on it, and then get it back either in the bag, take your picture quick, or get ready to release it. And these are, this is a tool that I think is going to help speed up me fishing to get fishing alone or with somebody. Um, it's going to make that fish have a little less stress. So we can renew that fish back to the water and eventually, hopefully, catch him again. Another thing I wanted to touch on is, uh, is my fishing net, my Frable Conservation Series fishing net. This is the model 9530. And it stores easy. I can actually keep it upright on, on the side of my boat just like this. And then if I ended up needing to get it or catch it on my own or, uh, you know, grab a fish on my own, this nut is fairly light. It's actually one of the lightest ones on here. And it has a very noticeable color orange where you can find it quick. Um, um, and it has a coated net, very deep bag. As you can see, it's very deep. So my deep V boat that I have, I can have a fish in it in the front of the boat and it is still going to be under the water and that's really key is letting that fish kind of relax in the bag and then you can get it unhooked and get everything ready, your camera ready to take a picture. Um, so that's one thing that I got last year that really has helped a little bit. Uh, another thing that I want to talk to about is how I store my baits. You're going to see two different bags here. I actually have a bag and I have a box. Um, Plano has made this big game box for quite a while. And it stores 40 baits upright in their individual slots. I probably have more than that because I kind of cram it. I fill it a lot. I can put multiple baits in the same place as long as I'm okay with maybe having to pull two baits up to untangle them quick. But I can do that with this box. And uh, that's a box that... Plano has kept with. It's fairly inexpensive. It's very protective and if I wanted to I can drill holes in the bottom and let it really drain out and air out a little better. Um, another thing that I liked that Plano came out with last year, two years ago, but I don't I don't think that they're making it anymore and I, I wish they would because the Plano M series hydro flow bag is easily my favorite. It was an awesome price point. It's slightly smaller, I understand, but if I was gonna go jump on my buddy's boat for the day, or if I'm gonna go make a trip for maybe a day or two, I can pretty much put all my favorite baits in here. It had room for a 3,700 box on top, so I could put crankbaits up there. I have room for leaders and tools. I can put uh, my pliers, my hook cutters, my file, it's got two side pockets, it's got two front pockets, and it has spots easily, readily available to get your pliers and tools to unhook 
unhook those fish and get them back in the water safely. And I just don't understand why they only made it one year. I'm trying my best to get it to come back, but I love that bag. Um, and it's full of lures right now, otherwise I would show you a little bit more about it. But I love that bag. I wish Plano would come back out with it, but um, that is the Plano M-Series Hydroflow. If you can find it somewhere, I think you can still find them on Amazon. It's a $70 bag. It holds, I think they say 25 baits. I'm betting you can put more in it. Um, and then, like I said, the Plano Big Water Box or the Big Game Box, as they call it now, um, that holds 40 baits up to 12 inches long. That's my bread and butter. This is what I put in the boat every time I go. And I actually have two of these that I can cycle different baits out for different times of the year. Um, or if I'm going to go on a boat with somebody else, which tends to happen a lot. I have a lot of fishing friends and we kind of fish back and forth in each other's boats. So great options that I've found from them. Uh, and then, like I said, if you can find these, pick it up because it's awesome and it's inexpensive. Um, so those are the 2019 baits that I'm really excited to throw this year. I think this suic, being that it's weighted, I haven't really thrown a weighted suic before and I know how good these baits have been in the past. Um, the weighted version I'm really excited about and the fact that I have weight kits to change um, my other ones so I can adjust them, make them float or be neutrally buoyant. I'm excited for that and I love that killer paint job. That must be a show paint job because I don't see it on their website unless it's new for this year. A lot of cool baits this year. I tend to throw a lot of bucktails. Normally don't throw a lot of rubber because it's not that enjoyable to throw but it's an option I'm going to do this year. Another thing I found is you can put like these blade kits in front of rubber baits. Um, I know Revolution has some. They have some kits out there that you can throw a front end kit on front on top of these or in front of these. There's a couple other guys that are doing it to give different baits a little different action and then the ability to do something different with them, throw different vibrations out into the water. I'm excited to try a lot of new things this year. Um, last year it wasn't overly great, but we did catch a couple good fish and I got my buddy his first fish ever and I caught one. I had a long dry spell, I'll tell you a long dry spell. And this is a very expensive sport. Anybody that tells you it's not is crazy. Um, when rod and reel combinations can get upwards of four or five hundred dollars or more, it's an expensive sport, and that's just one. There's a lot of inexpensive, pretty decent introductory uh, combos out there, and maybe I will touch on what I own. Um, if you guys really want to see that, you can uh, comment below, and uh, you can tell me if you want to see more or want to see the baits I already have or know more about some of these uh, bait boxes. Uh, different baits that I use, what has worked for me in the past, maybe different lakes I fish. Um, I know the muskie industry is very hush-hush uh, unless they're selling their own bait and I don't know why. I come a lot from, I, I enjoy the hunting industry because it's like a really tight-knit group of people and the muskie industry is tight, tight but there's very few people that are doing it so Bait makers are really like hush hush so they can get their get their bait out before somebody else does it too and I understand, I get it, but um, we should all be in this sport together. Uh, I really love it. It reminds me a lot of bow hunting. You can spend a pile of money and a pile of time for that one big animal or that one fish, but it has some addictive properties that as you can see I bought 11 baits at the Muskie Expo I bought a box or a, a bump board finally and I got to talk a lot of musky fishing got to see some stuff um, I would suggest I would suggest going to a show because 
you can learn a lot. You can talk to the bait makers themselves. You can probably meet a lot of new people that you can go fishing with in the future. Um, seminars. Uh, I highly recommend going to a muskie expo, um, a fishing expo, a deer hunting expo. If you're really wanting to learn, going to these things is very beneficial. So that's my 2019 new bait lineup. I uh, hope that we cook some more fish this year. Boats paid off so I can afford to buy baits and I'm hoping we can put some big muskies in the new nets.